morning. Welcome to Pine Grove. We're certainly glad that you're here. If you're here in the sanctuary or if you're on the internet listening to us, uh, either on the Sunday morning or whenever you do turn in, we're just thankful that you're here. We want you to feel welcome. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for all the things, again, Lord, that you've done throughout our lives in the past week. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of life that you provide from now on as, as long as we live, Lord, into the future. And Lord, we just thank you for the, you sending your Son, Lord, that we have the opportunity to accept him and to come, come to you, Lord. Oh, Lord, it's just beyond imagination. But Lord, you tell us to lift up our concerns and things of life to you, Lord. And so this morning we come to you and we, we pray for those around us who are sick. Lord, we pray for those around us who have lost loved ones. And Lord, we pray for those who are lost, stumbling about in concern. Seem to have no concern. Lord, you're the only answer for all of the, the things, all of the diseases, all of the, the grief, you know, the, the loss of conversion. Life, Lord, that, that they too can know your blessed Son. And Lord, we just pray for all of them in all the circumstances. And Lord, we pray for those all around us who've been affected by, by the recent storms, all of the things that happened in this world, Lord. The, we pray for the, the, the innocents and the, vic, the, the ones that are affected by wars all around the world and all those things that go on. Lord, we just we pray that. They'll come to you and come to an understanding. The ones who are constantly in, in some type of turmoil and protest, and Lord, we just pray for them that they'll, they'll come to an understanding to know you that there's a better way of life. And Lord, we just thank you this morning for all the things again, Lord, that you do. And Lord, just be with me this morning as I as I speak in your word, Lord, and help me and keep your hand on me. Help me to say what you would have me to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, again, this morning Christ died on the cross. He rose on the third day to pay the sin debt of all mankind. And he did it freely. So that all men have the opportunity to lead their life that will lead to eternal damnation and come to know God and enter eternal life through Jesus. John 3.16 says, for, John, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So that's a simple message. And that's a simple message of love from our Father. And it applies to all, all, no matter who you are or where you come from. You see, when anyone believes in their heart, what it says, when anyone believes in their heart that Jesus is the Son of God and recognizes that he must repent of sins and ask for forgiveness and guidance to follow Jesus as Lord of our life, anyone can be saved by the only way that we can be saved. There is no other way. There is only Jesus Christ. Well, this morning, and today, it's Mother's Day, and I want us to think about, I don't want to keep this too long this morning, but I want us to think about the good, faithful women to whom being a mother is a huge part of their every day. It's, it's a huge task. I want us to think about those who are there for their children, even when the situation is not the best. They don't give up. Maybe that situation is even dangerous. Maybe it comes amid trials and failures. But these good and faithful women never, ever give up. They, they're there for their children. They're there for the other people around them. You know, there are several mentions of brave, dedicated women in the scriptures. 
and many of whom were, or probably were mothers, whether we know or not. They probably were, but the, a lot of their actions denoted that mindset. And at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, we believe that most all of the male disciples had abandoned him, that they ran away and hid. They were afraid, but with good reason. For the government and the religious leaders of the time were about to begin hunting them down. And they had a message to tell, but they didn't really know what the message was yet. They knew part of it. But they'd abandoned him. The, the terrible, the violent scene, one of the most, you know, an execution is violent no matter how, how it's done. And this, this was totally barbaric and brutal. But in the middle of this terrible scene, John recorded this. In John chapter 19, verse 25 is where we're going to start. We're going to read some more, but in verse 25. It says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. And we're to say, we're to believe that he, she treated him as her son. The one who had motherly instincts, the one who raised Christ, the one who was there with the other with the other women at that violent scene. The other things I want to remember a lot more this morning, but after the death of Jesus, we're told that these brave women continued to stay close by. They continued there. Even after his death, they continued to stay near him. And in the Luke tw chapter 23, beginning with the 50th verse, it says, Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. He was a believer. He heard the message, and he was believing and waiting for the kingdom of God to come. So going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. And then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. You see, they stayed close by. They stayed as close by as they could be. And it goes on to say, Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. And in the 24th chapter of Luke, it starts out and says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb to do it. They were prepared to do a terrible task, a hard, hard thing to do. But they were there to help with the body of Christ that they'd not been able to do. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. And remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners. Be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. 
but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. But Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. And bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. And you need to remember also, the scripture tells us that the religious leaders had had guards placed on the tomb, armed soldiers. And they were already plotting how to say that the body of Christ was stolen away and hid somewhere when they discovered that the stone was rolled away. And that deception and others, even, even other deceptions that are even worse, were, were spread. And like stories to those abound today to try to discredit and belie the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior. It started then. It continues. But those brave women were willing to go face the soldiers to be close by, to be close to the Savior. So this morning I want to encourage all mothers, all future mothers, stepmothers, grandmothers, women who just step in to help with the raising of children. I want to encourage them to do the same in life today as those women did. Stand near the cross. Recognize that the tomb is empty and why. And hold on to the gospel of Christ and teach their children and other women to do the same. I encourage you fully to do that this morning. And you know why? But the mother is usually the first teacher, the one that the children hear first. And it's vitally important the women do not let the world lie to them and steal them away from the most important task that God meant for them to have, to be nurturing mothers. And I want us to say this morning that for many years, one of the ladies at this church here, who herself has passed away, away now, but each and every year on Mother's Day, she would, she would always rise remind us all of the fact that we should be thankful to God if we have or had a Christian mother. To all who still have their mother, we'll treasure her while you may have her. Treasure her while you can. And for those of us who've lost her mother, we'll honor her in memory and remember what she taught before she went on home. Everyone, all the women, all the mothers who hear this, I, I, I wish you a happy, happy Mother's Day. Continue in your Christian walk. If you've not started it, well, start it now. It's so important. And all Christians this morning, if you know that you allow cares and things of the world around us, cause you to put off and postpone your spiritual life to joy well put an end to all that today and to others who put off making Jesus the complete Lord of your life the time is now you may not have another day now is the time to ask Jesus into your life as Lord because there may be no other chance the choice is yours to make change your life to one of joy and happiness. When you do that, you'll know that Jesus is your Savior. And there's no other joy like that. That you know your future. You don't have to worry. When and if you do that, well, get inside of a of a church or a group that meets and worships, worships God and truth and shares the gospel, the true gospel. You'll have a wonderful life that way.
Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this morning, the time that you've given that we can speak on your word, Lord, and encourage these mothers and thank them for the, the, the job that they do, Lord, and just bless them all as they, as they strive. And the task is great. The task is great to spread the word among, among children so that the seed is planted early, Lord. I thank you for Christian mothers. Lord, I just thank you for them. And I, I thank, you, thank you for your blessed son, Jesus, who you sent that we could live. Keep us safe. Keep us humble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I want to remind you again this week, if you're here in this area, if you're northern central Arkansas. We'd love to have you come and visit with us. Or if you're looking for a church in the area, come come and visit or come and worship with us. We would, we would just, we'd love to have you come. And if you're looking for us, you can find us under Pine Grove General Baptist Church at 102 Silver Tree Road in Shirley, Arkansas. Like I said, we'd love to see you. Remember, God loves you.